Okay, hello everyone, and uh, thanks for uh, watching. So I would like to thanks, uh, thank the organizers for uh, making this uh, virtual uh, event uh, still possible, even if, even if the, the context is not, uh, uh, not easy, especially uh, Piotr and uh, Gorgia. Um, so I will be talking about uh, postdoc bounce on false positives using reference families. So it's a uh, talk about uh, multiple testing and selective inference. And this is a joint work with uh, Gilles Blanchard and Etienne Roquin in uh, Paris and uh, Orsay, respectively. Uh, and also with uh, Guillermo Durand, a former PhD student, and Marie Perodoques, who is currently uh, a postdoc with, with us. Um, so my motivation for this talk would be uh, the case of uh, a differential expression in genomics. So it's a... Um, uh, usual, I would say, situation in uh, in in uh, biomedical applications, um, where you are trying to find uh, interesting genes in some uh, sense of the word interesting. So my example would be the leukemia dataset by Kerati et al., where um, we are looking at um, uh, data matrix consisting of uh, gene expression measurements. And um, there are uh, typically in these uh, uh, data sets, there are many more variables than observation. In this particular case, we have uh, 79 cancer patients in, in two subgroups. Um, so these are two known subgroups um, corresponding to two cancer subtypes. And the question we want to address is to find those genes whose average expression differs between the, the two groups. And the state-of-the-art approach to this question is to perform one statistical text test for each gene. So that's why you have a multiple testing uh, setting with uh, uh, 12,000 tests. And uh, so typically what people do is that they select those genes based on, on, based on uh, some significance uh, measurements. So typically we compute a p-value for each gene and uh, apply uh, standard multiple testing procedure, such as the Benjamini and Hogbear procedure, aiming to control the, the proportion of false discoveries. So the, typically the false discovery rate, which is the expected fraction of uh, false, discovering, fra false discoveries in the data set. Um, so that's what, uh, basically what, what we know how to, uh, how to handle statistically. But uh, typically what people do, what researchers do, uh, is that they perform post hoc gene selection. So for example, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this plot, uh, on the y-axis, you see uh, a measure of significance, which is the, the, the p-value on the, on the log scale. So higher means, uh, means higher significance. And on the uh, x-axis, you have... Um, uh, the um, some measure of uh, distance between the, the, the two groups. It's simply uh, a rescaling of the uh, difference between the, the expression average in the two subgroups. So again, again so the, uh, the further left or the further right means the most interesting, but it's uh, two complementary statistics. And uh, so in this example, if you apply the in Germany, hardware procedure at 0.05 level. This corresponds to this horizontal uh, selection here. So you select this entire box with uh, 160 genes, 63 genes. And that's here that you have a statistical guarantee, meaning that you have uh, FDR less than 0.05. Uh, but if you also want uh, that the genes you select have a, uh, average between uh, average expression between the, the two groups, uh, greater than uh, 0.3 in this example, you end up with uh, 151 genes. So you, you deselected de this, uh, these genes here, and you have these two regions uh, which, which are of interest to you, but in, typically you have no statistical guarantee as to uh, concerning this type of selection. So our goal here is to uh, propose a framework to, to, to obtain formal statistical guarantees in, in this type of uh, user-defined selection, but uh, much more generally. So um, we'll start with uh, some notation. We have a set H of M null hypothesis to be tested, and among those, uh, a subset H0 of true null hypothesis, 
and H1 uh, the complementary set, which is uh, the basically the, the target of, of inference. So M0 is the, the cardinal of H0, and pi0 is the proportion of true null hypotheses, so the fraction of M0 divided by M. We are assuming, we'll be assuming mostly that uh, we have uh, at our disposal p values. Uh, so it's individual uh, statistics regarding the, the, the significance of the, uh, each item i. Um, and we're assuming that under the null hypothesis, the p-values follow a uniform distribution and that under the alternative, they're uh, stoch stochastically dominated by the uniform distribution. And for a given subset of hypotheses, R, uh, we are interested in, in controlling in some way the number of false positives within R. So that's this cardinal of R uh, uh, intersection H0. So formally, our goal is uh, explicited by the, the, the equation here. Um, our goal is to find uh, what we call a one minus alpha level post hoc upper bound on the number of false positives in a given S. So what is this? this it's um, a function V alpha of S uh, telling us that we, with high probability, with probability greater than one minus alpha for any user defined or uh, however defined selection of uh, hypotheses, the cardinal the, of S uh, intersection H0, meaning the number of false positives within S is not greater than this bound. So basically, if any, if some user gives me uh, uh, a subset S of, of their choice, I will be able to compute v, the, the bound V alpha of S and say, okay, with high probability, you have uh, less than V alpha of S false positives in your set. So formally, our goal is, here is to perform a post hoc inference, uh, which means to find a, one minus alpha level upper bound on the number of false positive within a set S. So it means that we want to find a function V alpha of S with the following guarantee. Uh, we want that with high probability, with probability greater than one minus alpha for any S, uh, for any uh, subset of uh, rejected hypotheses, the number of uh, true uh, null hypotheses within S is upper bounded by some uh, by, by this function of s, the alpha of s. So what it means is that if uh, some user gives me their um, uh, their selection s, I'm able to compute this bound and to say that with high probability the number of false positive is not greater than than this bound. And importantly, the for all s here is within the probability, uh, which means that um, the, the guarantee is simultaneous over any possible selection, meaning that the user can try uh, different uh, subsets and the guarantee is still, still valid. So um, uh, we'll be mentioning, uh, uh, simply listing very shortly, uh, some related works, uh, important works in this field, uh, the, the, the works of Genovese and Pasterman, and uh, Human and Solari, who popularized this, uh, this uh, basically this goal of post hoc inference. Uh, the, the workers of uh, Katsevich and Randas, uh, who, who worked especially on the case of uh, what we call p value level sets. Uh, and the, the works of uh, Major Krebs and Human, uh, where they, um, they worked on the case of where the hypotheses are are ordered in time or space. And we will also be uh, looking at this context in the end. So our starting point to reach uh, this goal of post hoc inference will be a, a, a probabilistic tool called, uh, called Symes inequality. So if we uh, reorder the, the p-values uh, among some set uh, indexed by capital, capital I as follows, so we use this uh, notation, uh, from the smallest to the, the largest uh, p-values in the set. So here, this should be uh, p subscript uh, cardinal of i colon i. Uh, then, uh, Symes inequality states that if uh, the p-values uh, under H0 are independent, then with probability exactly one minus alpha, 
uh, for all uh, index K among the null hypotheses. Um, the, um, the Kth uh, largest uh, null hypothesis is greater than alpha K divided by M0. Okay. And uh, an extension, important extension of this inequality is if uh, you have some, uh, some type of uh, positive dependence, which is called the uh, um, PRDS for positive regression dependence on a subset, in, in this case, in the subset H0, then the same, uh, inequ so this, e this equality becomes an, an inequality. So it becomes greater than one minus alpha. Um, so in our um, setting, uh, if you uh, actually rewrite uh, Symes inequality, uh, it can be uh, essentially written as, uh, as follows in, the, in this first equation. So if Rk is the set of uh, items uh, i whose p-value is less than alpha k divided by m, then um, with high probability, with probability greater than one minus alpha, uh, you have that uh, for any k, the number of false positives in Rk is less than k minus one. And um, uh, again, if you uh, a simple corollary of this is the following: uh, uh, is, is that the following bound v alpha v stock bound on the number of uh, false positives in any s. So what is this uh, bound? So it has a uh, relatively simple and closed uh, uh, formula. It's a minimum over uh, over the, over k of the number uh, here of uh, of p values in S which are greater than alpha k over m plus k minus one. And uh, in fact, this bound recovers the the postdoc bounds introduced by uh, Human and Solari. Uh, with a different, very different construction because their construction is based on, uh, on close testing and ours uh, basically use uh, science inequality and uh, interpolation uh, argument. And the proof, as you see, of, of this, uh, uh, that this, this bound is, is valid is, is very simple. It's simply you intersect the number of false positives in S, you intersect uh, the, the, the sets behind them uh, by, by, uh, by RK and it's complementary. And you realize that you have this upper bound uh, by the number of uh, items in S, but not in RK, plus the number of items in RK and in H0. And this one by uh, the same inequality is less than K minus one. So that's, that's where you get this, uh, this equation. Okay, so that's a uh, uh, first uh, tool. Uh, and what happens if we, if we use this tool on our uh, example? Uh, so I said that we're interested in, in this selection in the red uh, red dots here. So each dot is a gene again, uh, and we are selecting uh, with some kind of user-defined rule uh, 151 uh, genes. And what I can say is that uh, at least 79 of them are true positives. So it, which means uh, FTP false discovery proportion uh, less than 48 percent with uh, with probability uh, greater than point. Uh, 95. Uh, okay, so it's it's an informative stat statement on a very uh, specific and user-defined set. And uh, importantly, if the user changes their mind and wants to change, for example, the p-value threshold here or the, the, the full change threshold here, we can still obtain, uh, the, 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 we can still calculate V alpha of S and obtain a, a statistically valid so it's a very powerful uh, tool, I think. Um, and now I'm going to the, the core of the, of the subject, which is a, a generic construction of these post hoc bounds, not only based on science inequality. Um, so to, to, to obtain this, uh, I define a, a new uh, error rate, which I, we call joint error rate. Uh, which be, which is basically an extension of, of what you obtain using Symes inequality, but with, with possibly more uh, uh, generic sets. So the idea uh, is that uh, GR controlling family would be uh, a family indexed by K uh, uh, of sets RK and, and, and values zeta K, so integer values, uh, with uh, that satisfy the following. Uh, 
probability, the number of false positives uh, in each RK is less than ZK. And you see that uh, previously what we obtained from time inequality was for the case RK uh, defined by the p-value level sets, uh, p-values less than alpha k over m, and zeta k um, corresponding to k minus one. So that, that was a more or less a, a joint uh, k family-wise error rate control. But more generally, uh, we can define this, uh, this uh, equation as being our, our the JAR control. And uh, an important property is that uh, if you, you have this uh, inequality, then by interpolation, by the same argument as before, uh, you, you obtain uh, immediately uh, valid one rise alpha post hoc bounds. So the interest of, uh, of this uh, risk measure is that by interpolation, you can obtain a valid one minus alpha post hoc bounds. So uh, uh, two, two of them are stated here. Um, the second one, V bar uh, alpha of S, is, uh, is the one we already saw with, with the example of, uh, of Symes inequality. Uh, and, and this one is, uh, is possibly a more generic one, uh, which holds simply by noting that H0 satisfied the prop this property the, the, by, uh, by the, if you assume that uh, uh, this inequality holds. Um, so it's simply one set a, a one set a such that uh, this holds. So uh, so the it's a trivial also a combinatorial upper bound to say that uh, if you take the the uh, the worst case, uh, the largest uh, intersection such that this holds, uh, you obtain a valid postdoc bound. Uh, so we have. Uh, and in the case of, uh, of nested rejection sets, which was the case of uh, uh, the R case, the p-value level set here, uh, the two bounds coincide, but it's not, the, it's not always the case. So the main question now, uh, we have a device, if we, we have this control, then we have these bounds. So the main question here now is how to obtain this control, okay? So uh, I'm going to present two contributions um, to uh, the obtention of uh, GRR control. Um, in, uh, in some sense, two dual cases. Uh, the first is the case of uh, p-value level sets. So where um, typically uh, you will have a fixed uh, zeta k. So for example, k minus one. And uh, the question is to calibrate rk uh, in order to uh, to obtain GRR control for this zeta k, so RK will depend on the data, and GRR control uh, will uh, the problem of GR, uh, obtaining GRR control will be a problem of uh, jointly controlling the k family wise error rate, typically, and we will uh, study also a, a dual case in uh, in in some sense uh, the case of uh, structural hypothesis where. Uh, uh, we assume that uh, we have some prior knowledge uh, that will determine the, the, the shape of the R case. So typically, uh, the, in, in this example here, uh, that's uh, in the leukemia data set, we are looking only at chromosome 19, and, um, and we, are, we are plotting for each uh, gene on this chromosome uh, uh, the minus uh, log uh, p-value as a function of the, the gene order on, 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 on this chromosome uh, because the idea is that in this particular case uh, there is the prior uh, ID that the, that the useful discoveries or relevant discoveries would, could be clustered uh, in, in some uh, genomic interval. Uh, so in this case it makes sense to, to have a definition of RK which will be for example uh, intervals and uh, the question will be how to uh, to calibrate the zeta case accordingly. So the zeta case will, will depend on the, on the data. And here it will be a que question of uh, joint error rate control uh, as a problem of estimation of uh, the, the number of false positives in the, the reference uh, set RK. Okay, so uh, starting with the first case. Um, so this corresponds to, uh, to a paper uh, which is to appear in the Annals of Statistics and it's implemented in the R package uh, Sans Souci available on GitHub. Um, so here our, our setup will be uh, zeta k is k minus one and rk is uh, what I call um, p 
p-value level set, meaning that uh, RK is the set of p-values uh, which are less than some threshold, uh, express the function of uh, some uh, parameter lambda, depending on, on K. Um, so typically, uh, uh, in the example of, uh, of SIMES, uh, TK of lambda would be lambda K over M, um, but you can uh, have other uh, examples of, of, of TK, obviously. I will go back to that. And the idea is that in this, uh, in, in this setting, uh, since the RKs are nested, we have the equality uh, between the, uh, the, the, the bound, uh, the best possible bound V star and the interpolation bound uh, V bar. Uh, and uh, if you re rephrase the joint rate control uh, inequality, it can be uh, stated as follows. So it's uh, uh, the, the, the probability uh, that there exists an index k such that the k p-values among the, the true nulls is less than tk of lambda, is less than alpha. So the idea is to find a tk of lambda and to, to, to calibrate a lambda in such a way uh, that this holds. So um, if under the, the PRDS assumption, uh, the same inequality tells us that it holds for lambda equals alpha for the, the, the what we call the, the SIMES or the linear uh, family here. And uh, if you we are willing to assume that the, the, the hypothesis tested are independent, then you can also take lambda equals alpha for, uh, uh, if, you, if you choose for TK of lambda, the, 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 the quantile of order lambda of uh, some beta distribution, which is simply the, uh, the joint distribution of the test statistics of the of the p-values of the ordered p-values um, under the the null uh, hype, the, the joint null hypothesis uh, and under independence. So uh, these are two ways to to uh, to obtain GR, GR control using uh, uh, corresponding to two different uh, probability probabilistic assumptions. And um, um, an important point is to try to obtain adaptivity to, to dependence because you may not be willing to assume that this or that uh, probability assumption holds. Uh, and to obtain this, uh, what we propose to do is to uh, uh, use randomization. So in the, in the genomic example I was uh, talking about in, in the beginning of the uh, presentation, we would use a class label permutation in a, in a, in two sample tests, so you would be permuting uh, the, the class labels of the two types of uh, leukemia to, uh, to, um, to randomize the data and, and obtain um, the distribution uh, of an empirical distribution under the, the joint null. Uh, so this is exemplified in, in this, uh, in this uh, plot where we are plotting, so the x-axis is K and the y-axis is TK of lambda. So, we, and we are plotting for several values of lambda, the TK of lambda. And the question is how to choose lambda such that uh, this uh, inequality holds. And um, uh, this, this plot illustrates that the, in, in this case, the, the choice was uh, the, the red curve, the lambda corresponding to the red curve here, uh, which, uh, which corresponds to some um, alpha level quantile uh, for a particular choice of alpha. Uh, of the empirical uh, distributions here, which are, so these are the, the realizations of, of the permutation uh, procedure here. Um, okay, so if you're, uh, you use this uh, type of uh, uh, device on uh, the this leukemia data set, uh, and if, so here are the, the results. Um, so as a function of the number of genes selected, we were taking the top, uh, in, in the order of their significance according to the p-value, the top uh, 100 or 200 or whatever uh, genes. Uh, this, this line is the BH procedure, so that was 163 genes. And uh, what we had uh, previously using the SIMES uh, procedure, uh, SIMES-based procedure, is that we had the 79, I think, uh, uh, true positives, that's, that's the, the information we got. But if we use uh, this uh, randomization-based technique to, uh, to adapt to dependence uh, using the, the linear template, which, was, uh, which I mentioned uh, earlier, 
uh, we can update a much uh, stronger guarantee, uh, so more than uh, uh, 125. And uh, in this case, even even larger if you if you start from the beta template. So that's uh, simply an illustration of uh, the gain in power that you can obtain by 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 being not uh, uh, by being adaptive to to dependence. And the same, so that's an illustration on, on exactly the same data, but we are plotting a different quantity, which is not the uh, the, the lower bound on the number of true positive, but an upper bound on the number of false positives. So here, the higher, uh, the worse. And uh, again, the Symes, you see that the Symes bound, which is close to 0.5 uh, in, in the, in, in, at, at this, uh, at this uh, abscissa, uh, is clearly outperformed by the linear and the beta template. And if we go back to this, uh, this application with the Volcano plot, uh that's that's the plot i showed before where, where we had this 79 troop positives uh at least uh among 155 selected if you apply uh randomization using the the linear template uh, the guarantee you obtain is at least 115 uh, true positive which is a, a, a much uh, more in interesting guarantee for the, the same i mean there is no extra assumption actually you're, you're actually re uh ha having one assumption less so it's it's a it's a very nice illustration, I think. Uh, the second case I wanted to uh, to cover is the case of uh, fixed RKs and random zeta k's, which is uh, uh, studied in the paper with uh, Guillermo Durand, Gilles Blanchard, and uh, Etienne Roquin, uh, and that just appeared in Scandinavian Journal of Statistics. Um, so here the idea is that uh, we assume that we have a given structure on the RKs. Uh, maybe dictated by a prior knowledge. So, and, and and we make more specifically what we call a forest assumption, meaning that the RKs, if you take two of them, they are either nested or disjoint. So, if you take maybe R seven and R three, uh, they are disjoint, but uh, along one uh, branch of the tree, they are they are nested. Uh, so, in my example, genomics example, you could take one tree per chromosome, for example, and these uh, leaves would be uh, small intervals, uh, small genomics intervals, and this one, these, these uh, uh, larger sets here would be uh, uh, larger genomic intervals. Um, and the questions we have to address here is how to choose zeta k uh, for a given choice of rk, and then how uh, to estimate, to calculate the associated post hoc bound. So I will cover these uh, items briefly. Uh, first, what we did to obtain joint error rate control is simply uh, to uh, uh, go back to uh, the um, uh, DKWM inequality, so it's uh, proposed by Dvoretsky, Kiefer, and Wolfowitz, and uh, for which the tight constant uh, was uh, found by uh, Pascal Massard. And uh, actually, this uh, inequality uh, gives us the the fact that under independence of the of the hypothesis tested uh, for a given uh, family RK, the correct um, calibration of zeta k uh, is this one. So it's uh, I mean the formula doesn't matter much, but it's the important point is that explicit. It's uh, easy to calculate and it's a function again of uh, what happens uh, so that uh, of the number of p values greater than some threshold t. And we are taking an uniform bound over all possible thresholds. And here, K, uh, capital K, is the the size of the family. So it's a cardinal of uh, number of items in uh, in uh, in in the reference family. The number of uh, um, of, of sets here, if you want. Um, okay. And and then uh, so we have we have uh, this uh, this formulation for zeta k, but we we don't have uh, necessarily a, a formula to compute uh, the the best uh, the the corresponding post hoc bounds, because in this case uh, because the um, the RKs are not all nested, uh, we don't have uh, I mean the v the the the, um, the bound v bar of alpha uh, is valid but it's uh, not the best it's not optimal and uh, but we can uh, so we, we we show that we can actually compute um, efficiently the the optimal bound v uh, alpha star 
recursively by examining partitions at each possible depth in the forest, which is illustrated in the uh, in this plot. We're taking the uh, the, the the first, I mean, the the roots basically of the trees, and then intermediate depth and the 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 um, the, the the deepest, the, the leaves basically of the of the trees here. And at each step, you have a partition of the space, so you can you can have a reasonable bound, and then. Uh, combine, combining these bounds, you obtain the, the, the optimal bound. Uh, so these are uh, numerical experiments uh, comparing uh, these, uh, the, the bounds I just uh, briefly explained to SIMES, uh, SIMES postdoc bounds, which are the, uh, also the uh, sort of the state of the art in this, uh, uh, in this field. So here we are looking at the um, the confidence, lower confidence envelopes on the number of true positives, so uh, higher is better. Uh, the, the red one is the, the true number of uh, false positives, so it's simulated data, so I know the, the truth. Uh, the green is SIMES, and what, so what we show is that depending on the, on the setting, you can actually uh, greatly improve uh, the, the, the SIMES bound. Uh, by taking into account the prior information that the the, the relevant items uh, should be uh, nearby, and if you apply this uh, strategy to our um, uh, example of differential uh, analysis on uh, chromosome 19 of uh, the leukemia dataset, uh, in this particular example, what we get, for example, is that in this region containing uh, something like uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 80 uh, hypotheses. Uh, there, there are at least six true positives uh, according to, to this bound. So it's simply a, a, an example. And uh, here you have a link to a, a small uh, toy, a shiny, ha shiny application uh, where, where, where we make use of interactivity because uh, uh, the bounds are calibrating using a fixed family RK, but then the user uh, may still choose any uh, set of interest to, to, to them. And, uh, and and the, the the bound can be calculated efficiently based on on, on this set. Okay, so to conclude, um, I uh, presented a versatile approach to post hoc inference. So based on the the notion of uh, uh, joint error rate control, um, and so the, the 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 core of the problem is to obtain joint error rate control. It can be obtained typically either from classical probabilistic inequalities, as I showed. Uh, in, the, in two uh, different uh, use cases, uh, or also uh, by uh, randomization in order to adapt to dependence. And I try to show the, the fact that we were able to obtain uh, interesting gains in power using this, uh, this technique, for essentially for, uh, for free. I mean, as, as long as you have, uh, as, as, uh, you have uh, that, as your randomization assumption holds. And uh, to, to conclude, I, I wanted to, to mention the ongoing work uh, uh, which is the subject of the poster of uh, Marie Perrault de Caisse, uh, called Improving uh, Structured Post Hoc Inference via a Hidden Markup Model. So I don't know if, if uh, I don't know which will come first, my talk or her poster, uh, but still I'm advertising for this, uh, uh, this poster, um, which is, uh, can be viewed as an extension of uh, the last uh, bit uh, of which I've talked, uh, where we had fixed RKs and random data Ks. Uh, here we are assuming a specific uh, statistical model, um, namely a hidden Markov model, uh, motivated by the idea of uh, differential analysis. So the same uh, question uh, that we addressed, but along the genome. So in, in, in this case, where we want to, to select uh, uh, intervals, basically, along the genome. And in this setting, uh, Marie is working on obtaining, and, and she has obtained the post hoc bounds which are conditional on, uh, on the data. And uh, finally, uh, I want you to acknowledge our funding by the, so it's national grants, grants uh, from, the, from France uh, called, uh, called Sans Souci. Thank you for your attention.